So here's some help with the experiment one post lab. The first question says the density of water at four degrees Celsius is 1.000 grams per milliliter. Answer the questions below and explain fully. So the first question is how close were your measurements to this value? Were your measurements accurate, precise, or both? And explain. So this is really more than one question. The first question is how close were your measurements to this value? So to answer this, you want to find the percent error to answer this quantitatively. So the percent error is the <coughs> actual value that you got in the lab minus the theoretical value, which is the one over the theoretical, and then just make it positive. Those vertical bars are the absolute value bars. They just mean take that, make that positive and multiply by 100. So the actual is what you got from your experiment. The theoretical here is 1, and you would want to give that answer as my density measurement was blank percent away from 1.000 grams per milliliter. The second part of this question is, were your measurements accurate, precise, or both? And explain. So remember that measurements are accurate if they're close to the accepted value. In this case, the accepted value is 1.000 grams per milliliter. So if you were close to that, let's say within 10% percent error, so 90%, uh, then they'd be accurate. If the measurements, you, you measured the density using different pieces of glassware, and if all those different pieces of glassware gave you something similar, then they'd be precise, because precision is how close repeated measurements are to each other. And so that's how you would want to answer and explain that. The second question, part B of this, is which measuring device gave you the best result and why do you think this was so? So the best result is a density closest to 1.000 grams per milliliter. And then why do you think this was so? There you're really just asking how much care was put into placing the lines on the glass? And how do you know? So if you remember, these are your pieces of glassware. Say, for example, the 50 milliliter volumetric flask on the right. There's only one line on that. What does that imply? OK. Part C says give three reasons why your best result may have differed from the value above. Well, there are only two things. There are only two characters in this play. There's the water that you put into this, and then there's the glassware itself. So something must have gone wrong with one of those things. I'll let you think about that, what could, that could have been for each one. Part two says, explain the importance of completely submerging your solid, irregular object when using the water displacement method for determining volume. So water only goes up to the extent that you put something in it. However much volume you put into the water, the water will go up exactly that much. If you don't put the full object underneath the water completely, then the water will only go up a part of the object, and it won't give you the volume of the full object. To help you see what I mean, here's a video of someone putting an object into the water. You can see how when you continue to submerge the object, the water keeps going up. So if you want the volume of the full object, you have to submerge the whole object. The third question says, if you had used a different amount or mass of your unknown irregular solid, would the density you obtained be the same or different and explain fully? So they're asking about density, and density is mass over volume. Now they're saying if you used a different mass, so let's say you used a bigger mass. You took same metal, but just a bigger chunk of it. Well, notice that when the mass goes up like this, the volume goes up too, and the ratio stays the same. So no matter how much metal you use, the density should stay about the same. 